Hello and welcome back to Hidden Gems. My name is Arden Thomas. I'm the Syncom Small Talk Product Manager. Hidden Gems is where we try to show you capabilities of the product that you may not know about, but that might be very valuable for you to know about. So we are going to continue our Domain Master series where Domain Master is a framework that lets you build very, very modular, very reusable applications by following a, a few simple rules and using the Domain Master framework. This time we're going to be combining two applications into a, a new application as we've, we've done before in the past. But this time we're going to show you some other, some other issues and solutions for those. So we're going to combine industry list app. Let's open that up. It gives you a list of industries. Of course, if you can recall, when we, whenever we select one, that becomes the, the domain. Stock data set app simply gives you a, an application with a list of stocks in a data set to show you these five columns of information. We're going to join those two together in a new, a new application called Industry Stock Filters app. Let's show you what that looks like. We've got two sub canvases, one with, with the Industry List app another sub canvas with the stock data set app. That is basically the entire interface. Over on the instance side, let's look at the initialize. We are simply creating an instance of each of the applications. And since we want to run it in this new application, Industry Stock Filters app, we say in because we want to get a notice if the domain changes in that application. So if we select an industry, we want to know in this application. Likewise, we, we might want to know if something changes. If we have a selection here, we might want to know as well. So what happens is when you set it up this way, when you say in this application in self, when something changes in this, so with our example, if we select an industry, let's open this up. If we select an industry, you choose aerospace, the application industry stock filter app calls value changed in this framework, in this framework only. So I put a halt here because I want to show you something. First thing we're going to do is ask the industry list app for its value. Let's go ahead and do that. And if we come down here, we'll see it's as we as we just chose, it's aerospace. If it's nil, we're just going to say, hey, just, just show the full list of, of stocks. If we have an industry, we're going to filter that to the industry. Let's go ahead down here and do that. We're going to get the data, the stock data sets full list and select each one where the industry equals the selected industry as list. That's going to be our new stock list. Let's take a look at that. And that's, as you can see, a, a subset of the full list. And we're going to tell the stock data set app, hey, display this list of stocks. And it will do that. But I have the halt here to show you an issue. And that issue is, if I tell that stock app since we since we created it in this manner we're going to be right back here to value change let's go ahead and do that and of course i am back here again now, so this is one of the issues that i wanted to warn you about with with using updates subscriptions and updates with value models is that occasionally you can set things up that you're in a loop so you're in something, you make a change, or call something, which makes a change that brings you back ad infinitum in a, in a, in a loop, a tight loop that you need to figure out how to deal with. So we're going to show you a way to deal with that. There's probably lots of ways to deal with that. So we're just going to come here for a moment. I'm just going to show you we have the same industry selected, aerospace. And we're going to try to push that new list again, and we would end up right back here. 
In fact, I can show you. We'll do that same thing, get that same new list of stocks. And if I go ahead and push that, we wind up right back here to the same spot. Obviously, we don't want that. So one way to solve that, there's the, there's probably lots of ways to solve this. Some good, some ba bad, some simple, some complex. But I want to show you one way to solve that, that we're doing with this of this framework, I'm going to come here and say, okay, display this list from me, which is this application. Now, what that does, what I'm saying here is this change is, is originating from the industry stock filter application. And I know what's going on. I'm in control. And you don't need to tell me that there's been a change. I'm originating the change. I'm making the change. You don't need to tell me that something's changed. I'm, I'm originating the change. So if that's the case, let me save this. We'll go through that halt. And we'll, we'll create our, our new stock list. But this time, instead of saying display list, it's going to be display list from this application and what it actually will do is remove me if I'm a dependent it will remove me as a dependent change the display list and add me back so what that essentially does is pull me out of the notifications display the list and add me back and then I will not if I just go ahead here I will not come back to that halt. Let's change to aluminum and we're going to come back because we've changed for the first time but let me take this halt out and proceed. So now we can come down here and do that very nicely. We go to any of these industries it gives us very quickly a subset of what stocks are in that industry. There's one more change I want to show you. And that is, as I have a number here, I had a number of things to, to show you in the progression. And that is if we go here, if, if there's no industry selected and we say show full list, we'll again have that loop that we want to avoid. So there's another extension of show full list, which is show full list from me, this application. I'm going to save that. And now if I... If I deselect, I get a list of all the stocks, which is what we want. And we don't want to be in, an, in a permanent loop, an infinite loop, uh, by pushing those changes. So that's one way. This is our, our hidden gem for this time, dealing with that type of, of scenario where we change and we, don't, we want to avoid infinite loops, a way to deal with that that we're building into this framework. If you have any comments or suggestions, if you have, if, if you think you have uh, a potentially better way or simpler way of dealing with this, please let me know. Uh, one more comment. One thing you can do is you can come through this list to deal with this. You can say if the list is the same as what's already displayed in that, then don't push the update, which is an effective way of doing it. You will come back through this again at least once. So that's why it's it's slightly less desirable than this solution, but it is a, a valid solution. You will do some extra work, but you avoid the infinite loop. And I'm trying out this solution, which I think is both simple and effective and works for us here. Again, if you have any comments, please send them to athomas at syncom.com. I look forward to your feedback. I've been getting some, some great comments. Keep them coming. And until next time, have a great time with Smalltalk. Talk.